Hi guys, uh, in this video we're going to be covering how to frame a deck. Um, deck framing is pretty versatile within Next Step projects because a lot of what you're going to learn here can be applied to many different projects like a wheelchair ramp, uh, many of our full build homes have post and beam foundations uh, and you can take what you learn here in deck framing and apply it to those projects. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do here is get our ledger board set up, then we'll do our site layout and then we'll be ready to start framing our deck. All right, our, our first step here is gonna be to attach our ledger board. Um, as you can see, we have a mock wall up here. Uh, this is what we're gonna be attaching our deck to. Uh, we have some vinyl siding already attached. Uh, and the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is be able to take this vinyl siding off so we can properly flash behind uh, the siding. We'll save the siding, we'll be careful with it, and then we'll be able to reattach it after we build our deck. So the first thing that we're gonna do um, is we have a vinyl siding tool here. Uh, it's a little S hook. And what this is good for, um, we have a vinyl siding video and we, it'll show you exactly how this vinyl siding has been put on. But basically there's a little ledge behind uh, each row of these uh, strips of vinyl siding. And we can get up underneath here and take this siding off. Uh, but before we actually start taking the siding off, we wanna take a little bit of care and mark out where each of these pieces lie because after the um, deck is built, we're gonna wanna take these same pieces and put them back on and make sure they're in the same exact location. So one real easy way to do that is to come in here with a pencil. We have our J trim uh, that's going around our door and we can come in here at the bottom of each piece. Every two courses is the bottom of our piece here. And we can come in here with a pencil and just mark real small where the bottom of each of these pieces are. That way, as we remove these pieces and after we build our deck, we can reapply it and make sure that the bottom lines right back up where our pencil marks are, and we can go ahead and erase that mark. Um, now that we have, I can go ahead and do this side too, I guess. Now that we have these marked out, we can go ahead and start taking the siding off. So, like I said, this is a really handy tool. Basically what you kind of have to do is there's this little tiny S here on this hook. You have to get that worked up underneath the ledge of the siding, and once it catches, you can basically pull that latch out and run it down the edge of the siding here. There we go. And then once you get it started, you can just run it right along the siding here and it pulls that latch right out. And now you can come underneath and you can see where the siding has been nailed underneath there. And then you can get a flat bar and pull those nails just a little bit and take the siding off. So I'm gonna go grab a flat bar real quick and be right back. All right, so I got my flat bar here. Uh, we can go ahead and pull up the siding. Uh, another kind of cool trick that I learned with vinyl siding is when you're taking it off, uh, these nails should be uh, pretty loose to begin with because you want uh, expansion and contraction to uh, happen with your vinyl siding. So I just take these nails out just a hair here, just so they're away from the wall. And now with at least these first couple rows, um, what you can do is you can take your siding and carefully bend it right over this nail or if the nail comes out, just keep that nail in that same hole. Try to bend this one over. And leave those nails in there. Go ahead and take the piece off. And now when you go to reapply these uh, pieces, you know those nails are in the same exact location. And after you put the siding in place, you can bend it right back up over that ledge and then you know it's in the same exact location, you can then go ahead and pull that nail, uh, shift the nail over just a little bit to give it a new nail hole so it stays, um, and then reapply the siding. But if you leave those nails, you know exactly where the siding was taken off and you can go ahead and put it back on. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the, the, all the siding down here so we can access where the ledger board is gonna go and go ahead and properly flash it.
All right, we got our siding taken off here. Uh, we went ahead and cleaned off the wall with nails. Um, I did leave uh, at least one row of nails here. Like I said, when we go ahead and reapply the siding, that'll be a good uh, reference point. But anything below here, we're gonna be wanting to uh, do some flashing. And we want all those nails removed so it doesn't protrude our uh, flashing and render it useless. So. I have some ice and water here. This is what we are gonna be using as our uh, waterproofing membrane to be uh, put on the wall. Before, before we actually do that though, we want this waterproofing membrane to be uh, attached directly to the wall sheathing. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove uh, some of this Tyvek that's behind here. Uh, that way we can get it behind uh, the Tyvek and then eventually overlap that Tyvek onto the ice and water. So the way I'm gonna do that, is I know that uh, I'm gonna put about 24 inches of ice and water on here. Uh, again, I want this to overlap a little bit. So from the bottom of my wall sheathing, I'll go ahead and come up 20 inches. That way I have at least three inches of overlap all along here. And then I'll go ahead and slice this Tyvek off. So I'll go ahead and draw a line, cut this Tyvek off, and remove it. All right, so we went ahead and removed our Tyvek here. Uh, we got a nice clean line. Uh, I just wanna kind of reiterate, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of important to make sure that you do a nice clean line here uh, because this Tyvek that is remaining is gonna overlap. Uh, if you kind of go through here and freehand it, you might accidentally cut it a little bit too high. It'd be a wavy line. Uh, and it just won't be a very good uh, seal. So go ahead and take some time, take a level, make sure it's level and cut it straight. Um, so we already have our ice and water here. I went ahead and cut it to 24 inches and I'm gonna go ahead and apply it and run it nice and flush with the bottom of our wall sheathing here. And I'm gonna make sure that it's tucked up underneath our uh, Tyvek here so everything, if water does get behind the siding, it's gonna overlap the ice and water and everything sheds down uh, the wall here. So let's go ahead and start to roll this out and get this applied. So we got it started here, up kind of where we want it. I'll go ahead and raise it and get it nice and flush with the bottom of the uh, wall sheathing here. And then Azaz got a couple button tabs and he can start to remove the plastic and just tack that top corner. It's a, it's a good idea to go ahead and leave the plastic on here, because as you can see, it's gonna take just a little bit to um, get it exactly in place. And if you take all the plastic off, it's gonna go ahead and stick to the wall. Um, so it's helpful to just keep it on and pull it off a little bit at a time. All right. So now that Azad has it tacked in one corner, he can go ahead and start taking the plastic off a little bit more at a time here. Bring it on over to my side. I'm still flush. So I'll then just go ahead and remove it. And then Azad can come over and tack it in this side. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of the plastic removed and go ahead and nail this off with button tabs. All right, we went ahead and installed our ice and water here. 
Uh, you may have noticed uh, we had run that ice and water all the way across here, and I did that for a very specific reason. Um, it's beneficial to try, especially when you're doing a deck, uh, to try to get your door pan um, and your ledger flashing all in one piece. Uh, you can reference our door and window uh, videos on how to actually do a door pan, uh, but basically this ledger flashing wraps up and creates that pan for the door. That way if any water does come down and sits on this sill, it's gonna be protected by our, our uh, ice and water water guard here. So I went ahead and did that, and the reason why you try to get it in one piece, obviously now there's no seams, but if you were, if you already had a door in place uh, and you're trying to put another door pan on top of here, uh, this ice and water is roughly about a sixteenth of an inch thick. So you can see I already have two layers. I have the flashing and then I have this little corner piece here. And now I've just bumped that out about an eighth of an inch. So if I was to put this ledger flashing on here and then put a door pan on top of here, now I've already built that up to about three or four layers thick and I might be built up to maybe a quarter inch by the time I'm all said and done. And that might not seem like a big deal, but when we're starting to put our actual door in here, that's gonna make a huge difference when we start to do our finish trim because we'll have a quarter inch gap on the bottom and it'll be nice and flush on top. And that's just a nightmare for our finished carpenters who are trying to do our extension jam. So be nice to them and try to take care of that in one step down here at the bottom. Another thing that you might notice, uh, this ice and water has a sticky membrane to the back of it. So I put minimum nail, minimal nails in uh, through this stuff. Uh, basically what this does is as you put a nail through it, it's gonna seal around that nail, but it's still putting a hole through this membrane. Um, so anytime you can minimize the amount of nails you put through here, the better. We're actually gonna be putting some metal flashing on top of here anyway, and nails are gonna be going through that. So why put double the nails when I'll just uh, rely on the stickiness for now, and then as we put that tin on here, that's gonna get nailed on and that will definitely hold this in place. So try to think ahead of how many nails you're putting in and minimize those nails. Uh, the next thing, uh, just to kind of touch on, it's, uh, this stuff is pretty sticky, especially if you're using it in hot temperatures, uh, but one last thing that you can do is you can take a broom and just sweep down and what that's gonna do is that's gonna fully engage that stickiness to the wall sheathing. Uh, so it's just a good idea to sweep this whole part. And just sweep it nice and good and get that uh, stuck on well. So then uh, what we're ready to do then is start thinking about attaching our ledger board here. So let's just talk a little bit what a ledger board actually is. So you can see I have my uh, deck uh, framing laid out here. It's gonna be 16 on center. And what this actually does is this is gonna attach to the wall and give us a solid surface here to attach our uh, deck joists to. Um, it helps carry just a little bit of load, um, but primarily it's a really good backer for those uh, deck joists. So what we're also gonna be doing here is trying to position it in the proper location on this wall. This uh, particular deck is gonna be nice and centered with the wall, uh, but not all decks are designed the same. Um, sometimes you have a door off to the side and you just wanna reference your set of plans and figure out where exactly this deck is gonna be located um, in conjunction with the house. So like I said, our deck is gonna be nice and centered with this door. So what I can do is find the center point of our door and line it up with the center po uh, point of our ledger board and then I'll know that I'm centered uh, within the door. Second thing that we wanna think about is whenever uh, doing any deck framing, you want the height of your deck to sit below uh, the height of the door and that's for one uh, major reason. Uh, if you have snow or water that's happening to just sit on top of your deck, you don't want that coming back into your house. So uh, typically, I know decks are usually dropped down about two inches. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do here with this deck. Uh, we're gonna come off from the bottom of our door here and drop down two inches. The second thing you have to think about when 
uh, dropping your deck down is the thickness of your deck board. If you just put this ledger board at two inches down and put your deck board on top of here, you're only gonna have a half inch drop. Um, we're using two by six deck boards in our case. Uh, some of the composites and other deck boards are five quarter. Uh, so just understand what uh, deck board you're gonna be using before you set your uh, ledger board because you're gonna have to take that into account. So in our case, with our two inch drop and our inch and a half thickness of uh, deck board, we're gonna be dropping down three and a half inches from our door. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that out. And then I'm gonna run a chalk line through here and get this uh, snapped out, ready for our ledger board to be put in place. I mentioned earlier we're gonna be putting some tin on here. Uh, this ledger board here isn't going to come all the way up to our door. So um, instead of trying to side under here, which is really, really difficult, uh, it's helpful to just put some coil stock or some tin up here, and that's gonna basically act as our siding um, after we get this installed. Also, a lot of times, many homes, this door is much higher. Uh, maybe there's two by 12 floor joists. Um, so sometimes there's gonna be a little bit showing below the, the ledger board as well. So I got some 14 inch uh, coil stock here and it's gonna basically cover this whole area. And we'll go ahead, roll that out, install it, and then re-snap our line on top of that for our ledger board. So what we can do here is we'll install it pretty much just like our ice and water. We'll start in one corner, get it rolled all the way out. and then neatly nail it off uh, with some roofing nails. Again, kind of thinking ahead of, this is gonna be our finished product here. Uh, so Azad's just gonna be putting nails where siding is gonna cover it back up um, and where you won't see it. Yep. All right, so we'll go ahead and get this nailed off and we'll re-chalk our line and we'll be ready to install our ledger board. All right, so uh, we went ahead and attached our tin here. Again, um, from the bottom of the door to our ledger board here um, with about our deck board, this amount is going to be shown um, or showing after our deck is installed. So it's gonna be really hard to get uh, siding up in there. So this tin just takes the, um, the effect of siding basically. Uh, one thing that I kinda didn't show when we installed this, um, we had uh, installed this just a little bit high uh, and that's uh, for being able to bend this over um, and actually run it underneath a door. If you were to um, be installing this tin with a door already in place, it's gonna be hard to get uh, much more than just a half inch of tin up underneath this uh, threshold. So I try to get about a half inch underneath there and then you can come and silicone um, that joint after everything's installed. But try to go ahead and bend that back up in there just a little bit. Uh, the next thing that I did is I went ahead and found the center point of my door, which is right here. I took a square and brought that down uh, to our line here. I also found the center point of our ledger and we're now ready to install our ledger board. Um, what I'm gonna do is our ledger board should be installed with uh, these ledger locks. I'm gonna talk about these here in a minute. Uh, but just to get it tacked up here, um, what I'm gonna use is a 16 penny uh, deck nail. And important thing to note about these is these are hot dip galvanized. All the lumber that we're gonna be using for this deck is gonna be treated. So we wanna make sure that we're using a nail that is galvanized or hot dip galvanized, otherwise it will just um, be eaten away by the chemicals in this wood. Um, and what I wanna do here is um, 
Typically, you can't really go into the side of a house here. Um, but if you reference our floor framing videos, uh, what we have here is our mud sill with our two by 10 floor joist on top of that and our floor sheeting and then our wall system. Um, what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to get these nails um, to hit our floor joists. So knowing that we frame this wall, we know that uh, the, or these, this floor system, I should say, uh, these floor joists are 16 on center. And something that we did off camera uh, before we started um, was on our foundation wall here is we marked our 16 on center for our floor joist. That way when we go in and install our ledger board, we know that right here is gonna be a floor joist and every 16 on center. That way we can get our nails to hit our floor joists. So we can go ahead and lift this up. Uh, Zod, if you wanna help me lift this into place here. I'm going to uh, reference the top edge of our board uh, to the line that we have here and then match up our center lines. And then I'll go ahead and find a joist. I'm gonna get a nail started here. Double check that we're right where we're supposed to be. Ah. And drive that nail home. And then I'll come over here and find another floor joist. And install that there. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and install three nails into the end of every floor joist, uh, get this nailed off, and then I'll talk a little bit about ledger locks. All right, so we went ahead and nailed off our ledger board right here. Uh, we got three nails in every um, end of the floor joist of our house, and now we're gonna be ready to install what's actually gonna carry the load of this ledger board, or, or the deck here. Um, and we're gonna install these ledger locks. Um, basically what this is, is it's a big uh, structural timber screw uh, and it's got very high shear. Um, and uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, the, the nailing schedule, or the screwing schedule uh, for these ledger boards. Um, one of the biggest mistakes that guys do is one, um, there's a difference between ledger locks and timber locks. Um, timber locks we're gonna be using uh, to attach our rim joist to our posts, uh, but these ledgers are gonna be um, a little bit thicker in diameter and they're meant uh, to carry a lot more uh, load. So just know that these two are not created equal. Um, it's not okay to replace uh, the or ledger locks with the timber locks. Uh, the second thing that a lot of people do is they don't really do any research of the nailing schedule. And a lot of people will put one, two, or three every 16 inches, um, which in like most theory, you would think the more of these you put in, the better. Uh, but actually what you're doing, if you kind of take an example for our nails here, these nails have very small uh, diameter shanks. Uh, so it's not causing too big of a problem. But if you were to put uh, ledger locks where all three of these nails were, you're essentially creating a really weak point all along um, this grain line of this wood. Um, so over time, if you were to put these in, it might last for a year or two, but as this piece of wood dries out, you're gonna start to see uh, stress cracks all along these fastener uh, locations. So doing just a little bit of research, uh, what the ledger lock um, company recommends is anytime you're within any edge of a board, you're gonna wanna come in three inches and then go every 18 inches. Um, and you're gonna put one every 18 inches. And you're gonna do that in a W pattern. So we'll put one coming in three inches here, three inches down from the edge. Then we'll come down and put one on the bottom at this 18 inch mark. We'll put one at the top at this 18 inch mark and alternate all along this board. That way, basically you have 36 inches between the top row and 36 inches below the bottom row and they alternate. Um, and that way it doesn't ruin your ledger board and um, it's just a much stronger system that way. So 
Unfortunately, Ledger Lock uh, doesn't put too much information on their packages, uh, but their website is pretty user friendly and you can find those tables or just uh, ask one of your construction coordinators and they can lead you to the right uh, screwing schedule. So I'll go ahead and start to put these in and I'll go every 18 inches in that W pattern. All right, so we went ahead and installed our ledger locks here uh, every 18 inches in our W pattern. Uh, and off camera, our cameraman actually asked a really good question of, is it important to get these into our uh, floor joists like we got our nails? Uh, and the answer is no. Uh, a lot of guys, I think, I think these come in like four, six, eight, 12 inch long. Um, so there's really no need to put a eight inch uh, ledger lock into a typical residential home because your rim joist is either going to be about an inch and a half or inch and three quarters if it's an LVL. Uh, so you really only need those threads into that first uh, rim joist and through your ledger board here. So ideally a three inch ledger lock would be okay because it's not going to um, need to go any deeper than that. So just wanted to point that out. So now that we got this installed, uh, we're ready to lay out the rest of our site. 